And a new landmark study is out today about COVID and air travel. As we approach the holiday travel season, how risky is it to fly on a crowded plane during this pandemic? Transportation correspondent Gio Benitez has more. This morning with a mannequin on board, we're getting a look at how particles may move through an airplane. The Department of Defense working with United Airlines conducting 300 tests over six months. The mannequin reproducing breathing and coughing with and without a mask. When the dummy wore a mask, the results were encouraging, though they haven't been peer reviewed. The risk of transmission is virtually non-existent? Virtually non-existent. And again, this is, this, this, is a, this is a U.S. military study. Here's how the tests worked. The mannequin was equipped with an aerosol generator. Technicians would have it breathe and cough with a mask on and off. Using more than 40 sensors throughout the plane to detect the spread of droplets, the researchers found that with the mask on, only 0.003% of particles actually made their way into another passenger's breathing zone. But the team didn't attempt to replicate what might happen Happen when the infected person stands up or moves through the cabin. Now, I'm not standing here telling people that I know exactly what they should do. But what I am telling people is if you are inclined to travel or thinking about air travel, there is a reason today based on this independent study that you can feel confident that you can travel safely on an aircraft. The study also reflected similar earlier studies that found a plane's unique airflow helps minimize risk. On a plane, air flows down from above each seat, not front to back. This helps limit person-to-person -person airflow. A HEPA filter eliminating 99.99% .99 of airborne particles, including viruses, every two to three minutes. Just last week, the International Air Transport Association released new research saying the risk of contracting the virus on a plane appears to be in in the same category as being struck by lightning. Among 1.2 billion travelers, they found just 44 published cases of potential in-flight transmission, mostly in the early days of the pandemic when masks weren't required. This study is confirming that, you know, among all the different places where one can get infected, flights might actually be one of the safest places to be. But remember, flying involves more than a plane. As more people start traveling for the holidays, airports will also get busier. So experts remind us it's critical to wear that mask as you walk into the airport, go through security, board that airplane, sit through the flight, and land at your destination. Now, there are some caveats to the study. They only used one kind of mask, a surgical one, and they simulated just one sick passenger on a completely full plane. But clearly, this was an extensive study, and it gives us a real clue, Diane. All right, Gio Benitez from LaGuardia Airport. Gio, always good to know these things. And for more on this study and traveling safety during this pandemic, infectious disease Dr. Todd Ellerin joins us now. Dr. Ellerin, thank you for being here. Dan. So, like so many, this hits home for me. You know, so many of us have family overseas that we haven't seen in months because of this pandemic already. Now the holidays are coming and you have to wonder, you know, is it safe or do you have to forego those gatherings? What's your takeaway from this study in terms of the safety of traveling to get there? I do think this study is very encouraging, Diane. I mean, the bottom line is when you think of it, when we talk about people, place, time, and space, one would think the airplane would be very unsafe, right? It's indoors, there's lots of people, you're in close proximity, and you spend a lot of time on the plane. But I think what we're seeing is that if everyone's masked, that what's very unique about flying is that circulation, the ventilation on the plane, it's really optimal. So when you think about a normal room, if you can have four to six air exchanges per hour, that's considered excellent. On the plane, there's air exchanges every six minutes. So that's 10 times uh, or an hour, 10 times an hour, the air is exchanged. Also, you have air coming down, which is going to dilute any infectious particles. And as you heard Gio say before, you have those HEPA filters. Those can filter out those viruses viral particles. So you really have a very safe cabin. Now, with what this study showed, as a matter of fact, is that if you're masked, that when you have these 
um, mannequins with aerosol generators, these particles, only three per 100,000 particles are getting into the airspace of the person seated next to you or in, on the jet bridge or in the galley. So all of those things are very encouraging that the risk is low. But I do want to point out, remember, it's not zero. But overall, when you think about indoor transmission, it may be that planes are some of the safest places you can be. But I, I noticed the stress is on if you're masked, if you're masked. What if you have the random person on the plane that doesn't wear their mask or doesn't wear it properly or we all usually eat at some point during the flight? How risky is it if you're in, a, in an environment where, you know, you're going to eat, for example, you have to take your mask off for a little while or you don't want to trust that everyone else around you is going to wear theirs properly? What an important point, human behavior. Mm -hmm. Human behavior can protect us, and human behavior, as we're seeing across the country, can, can harm us as well. So, you know, if you're sitting next to someone who has highly in in infectious virus, they take off their mask, or you take off your mask, then, it, then it's a different story. Uh, the other part of it, as Gio pointed out, you know, being on the plane, that's normally the part when we think about when we think about the risk of air travel. But that's only one part of the process. You have to get to the airport. You might have to wait in line at the airport. You might have to wait in line to board and so on. So how concerned should we be about those parts of the process? I think it all comes down to individual risk. And I think it is important that when you think about the elderly or people with chronic conditions, you really have to think twice these days about traveling, not specifically about being on the plane. But remember, the more mobility Mobility is directly proportional to viral transmission. We've seen that in many studies. So, you know, I, 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 I still think that people who are more vulnerable have to think twice about traveling in, in any way, shape, or form. And in terms of people who do decide that for one reason or another that they do either need to travel for the holiday season or they decide that the risk is worth it, what can they do to mitigate that? It's the same COVID-19 infection prevention bundle that we've heard before. The, the washing, the distancing, the masking, avoiding crowds, spending as much time outdoors. If you're indoors, open the windows, try to optimize that ventilation. You know, I, I think that we know, we know this bundle, but sometimes it's easier said than done. Yeah, especially with the weather getting colder. Dr. Ellern, we appreciate your time this morning as always. Thank you. Take care, Diane. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.